Are you familiar with Thucydides Trap? No. It's, a, it's this concept that whenever a rising economic power is about to displace the dominant economic power, war erupts. And there's been, for at least a decade now, fear that that's going to happen between the U.S. and China, particularly with the constant cyber warfare that's been going on for some time. Then you've got the the strike strike the Chinese strike groups going through the the, the Strait the Strait of Taiwan I believe it's called and their claims to the South China Sea the sinking of Vietnam, Vietnamese boats the expanding of the military into the South China Sea into the, into the atolls and recently we had uh, an elephant walk in Guam and the the, the I, I think um, the U S retreated our our military forces and brought them back to the U S there was a fear that China could have wiped out our entire you know that that entire force so. There's real concerns that with China taking Hong Kong, right now they're doing beaching drills, which people assume is, is mostly about seizing Taiwan, that if the U.S. can't maintain that control, China's economic growth will eventually displace the U.S. And they're, they're on track for 2028, I believe, right now. And then war. Well, if they go to war with us, it would destroy their economy. Now, it may be that they don't care about that, that but and then if we say that their economy will displace ours, no, it would be potentially bigger in, in a backwards number like GDP terms, but China's a desperately poor country relative to us. They'll still be exponentially poorer than we are in 2020. Their per capita income right now is, what, 4000 a year. In Aliquippa, PA, that poor, depressed American city, it's over 20000 So it's still a very poor country. Uh, but again, if they grow richer, they will grow richer because the U.S. becomes quite a bit richer but, than but isn't isn't that per capita gdp just based on the fact that the authoritarian government is authoritarian i mean they've got more millionaires in china for i mean for an obvious reason as well they got substantially more people when has the state ever been able to build an economy like that we know authoritarianism from the 20th century we know what it looked like it smelled intensely it was lines for shoes that didn't fit and that you didn't want what did pj o'rourke always say that bulgarian blue jeans ended the cold war China is not authoritarian in the way that it, what the communist world was in the 20th century, where the people were desperately hungry, deprived, miserable. To go to China is to go to a very modern place. Again, I'm not defending every aspect of, about it, but I think it's a mistake to say that they're authoritarian in the way that the former Soviet Union was or that Cuba is today or that North Korea is. I mean, in, in what sense, though? They, they currently have concentration camps. They would argue that we do too. That does that. This is not me bash. I I love the United States. The Chinese always wonder. Well, the U.S. treated Indians in a certain way. They treated black people in a certain way. Uh, why is it that we're criticized for 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 certain things that we do? Again, I'm not defending because they're doing them now. Like Guantanamo and be, Bay, and, and because they have nuclear weapons, and because they're growing at such a rate that. If there is right now a country that currently thinks it's okay to engage in the formation of concentration camps and ethnic genocide, and there's another country, the United States, the dominant superpower, which doesn't agree with that, and that's inherently better than the other, why would we let a country that supports genocide and concentration camps take over the global economy and challenge our authority? They can't, a country can't take over a global economy. It's, it's people within it. The U.S. is the biggest economy, most prosperous economy in the world. But if you went to, again, Burkittsville, Maryland, would you think that? I mean, there are parts of the, yeah. the, the U.S. that are very rich. There are parts yeah. of the U.S. that are desperately poor. Uh, same with China. It's not a country thing. So, But if China, the more China grows rich, by definition, its wealth redounds to us because if they're not, by virtue of getting rich, that means that they're improving our lives by selling us things that we need, which allows us to specialize. Or they're gaining influence over our country's leaders who then pass laws favorable to China, which suppress our rights. Case in point, when Hong Kong was being essentially taken over by China, you couldn't buy a custom jersey from the NBA that said free Hong Kong. They banned it. People like Mark Cuban and Steve Kerr came out in defense of Chinese authoritarianism. Why? Because they were in on the take. Mm -hmm. If China grows powerful and they gain access to all these resources, they start making more money because they make our medicine, because they make most of our, you know, many of our basic goods that we can't manufacture anymore. Then at a certain point, you are going to see our, we, we have our politicians. We have Joe Biden flying his son on Air Force Two to China for a private equity deal. 
And then they're going to be deferential to Chinese authoritarianism as opposed to American constitutionalism. And then one day you'll wake up and find that you have politicians saying things like, we should allow the, the Chinese way of life into our universities, which we have the Thousand Talents program. You're going to end up with people like Mark Cuban, a prominent TV personality, advocating on behalf of Joe Biden to get elected and advocating against the First Amendment, our own constitutional rights. What's, what we thought was going to happen was that opening up China and expanding our, our, you know, our, our trade deals, there was this idea among this neoliberal uh, group of, of global politicians that trade lines will end war. I heard it from uh, Penn Jillette, actually, and, he, and he's a, I believe he's active in the Cato Institute. He said what ended war between Britain, Great, the Great, Great Britain and France, or England and France, was economics. They realized they could all become much better off and wealthier. But f to a certain degree, they have a very different culture for a certain amount of time. But then they also share certain values, namely religious values and, and basic moral framework. The United States does not share a moral framework with Chinese communism. So as China gains more power, we thought they would become more like us. In fact, the opposite is true. Do you think the state controls the economy in China? I think that the Communist Party has tendrils in all of their major corporations. And it's so what, American are, you, what country. are you worried about then? Based, based on what you're saying, they're not a threat economically. Because unless the Chinese are genetically superior in such a way that their businesses can somehow survive the state wanting to control what they do. And we know here that the state is limited by the known. You guys are planning an all new way of doing things economically that politicians would be surprised about because they've never even heard of it. So unless the Chinese are somehow unique, what you're describing signals their eventual decline economically. I, I don't think so. They're, what, what they're doing is they're allowing capitalistic enterprise while making sure that certain, certain things that would threaten their structures can't exist. So for instance, we see this now in the US in many ways. If uh, you say the wrong opinion or even the wrong name on these platforms, you'll be eliminated. You, you, you say complimentary things. You know, we're talking about doing a sitcom. We're talking about expanding and producing culture. At any moment, any one of these, the, any, any, any part of the infrastructure, the chain links that allows us to exist could ban us for an arbitrary reason. And we see it all the time. People get erased from the internet. Their opinions are not allowed to exist. And there's an attempt by this dogmatic cult to create a monoculture in this country, very similar to what we see in China. So when China, what the Chinese Communist Party did that was, was brilliant, when they watched the collapse of the Soviet Union, when they watch the failures of the fascists, they realize, you know what works? Allow capitalistic systems to function to a certain degree and then make sure we have a place to stop anything that would challenge our ultimate authority and power. We want businesses to grow and flourish, but if at a certain point we see something that would upend our power, we shut it down. So what happens in China? Censorship. If you go online and say there was a, a you know, we, we, we had this viral video where a guy was buckled to a chair and beaten by police for saying he didn't like police. So sure, they have McDonald's. They also get their doors welded shut when they get sick and then they die. They're treated like like things, part of a hive instead of individuals. What's scary then is in the U.S., as more and more of our, 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 our wealthy individuals, our millionaires, our billionaires and the lobbyists who are funded by them started getting special favor from China, started having investments in China. They became deferential to China. You'll see these billionaires who would say, if I come out and say free Hong Kong, I might lose a million dollars this year, so I won't do it. In fact, if I allow people to buy a NBA jersey that says free Hong Kong, China will get mad at me and we'll lose our NBA contract, so I won't allow that. Now Americans were actually barred from saying free Hong Kong. That's a, that's a value that we hold dear in, 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 in terms of our history with classical liberalism, freedom of the individual and the consent of the governed. China doesn't respect that. The more power they gain economically over our industries and our politicians, the more those politicians are going to keep deferring to China. And then come 2028, when their economy displaces ours, there are going to be a substantially, there's going to be a substantially large amount of very wealthy individuals flooding money all throughout the United States to pass laws that suppress the rights of American citizens. Now, the Chinese Communist Party has their party branch in all of these all of these companies in China. If you want to open a Google office in China, the Communist Party gets a branch. Well, in the United States, we're getting something similar with the Office of Diversity, Inclusivity and Equity, this cult like ideology of leftist identitarianism, which functions in a much in a very, very similar way. And it seems in many ways deferential to China. So my fear is if the United States continues down a path of culturelessness or cultural stagnation 
And we keep deferring to, hey, we all make money when China makes our vitamin C and our antibiotics. Eventually, China is just going to have all the money and they're going to be able to pay people off. And it's been happening and it's working and it's bad for us. Case in point, the numerous amount of of university professors who were arrested and charged with taking money from China without telling the U.S. government. So you had professors who were getting grants from the U.S. government and then also secretly taking money from the Chinese Communist Party, essentially or allegedly, to then give American research to China. So we pay for it. The American taxpayer, the, the, the American labor, and then China uses it to exploit us. They then gain more economic influence. They then give incentives to our millionaires and our billionaires who then turn around and tell all of these local politicians, all of the, they, they pay for these commercials and they run propaganda and politicians that suppress our rights and take away from us. If this keeps continuing, eventually China will, will, will stage, uh, will actually uh, uh, invade Taiwan. Joe Biden won't be able to do anything about it. The rest of the world will say the U.S. is unable to protect its allies, and then China becomes the global dominant power. And then when you talk about all this wonderful American culture that spreads across the globe, it will start changing into Chinese communist culture. Then in the United States, which we're already seeing calls for banning hate speech, there are going to be people who end up in prison and beaten for saying the wrong thing. Once we start losing our constitutional rights, and we are, then how long until we just clap and cheer and watch as China takes over and we just do what they want? Well, because what you're saying, once again, can't happen if the states plan it. You're saying the Chinese can control uh, the future. They can control businesses. But implicit there is that they know what the businesses of the future will be. We see that as folly all the time in the United States. Let's never forget that back in 2005, Blockbuster wanted to merge with Movie Gallery. The FTC said no, too dominant in home rental video. So out of nowhere comes Netflix and wipes them out. Mm. If you go back to 2000, Time Warner wanted to merge with AOL. Government held that up for a year. That was going to be too powerful of an industry. You know, there's no way if, if that's that they're going to have full control. Oh, yeah. Well, within a few years of that merger, AOL was wiped from the masthead. Uh, back in the 1960s, the view was that if GM isn't controlled, isn't, isn't constrained by government a little bit more, they're going to own the whole car industry. By 2008, that same federal government was bailing them out. So by definition, when government tries to control business, it is controlling the past. Once the government discovers you, as worthy of plucking for money. Once it discovers the billionaires worthy of plucking, they've discovered the past. Remember, I submit to you Microsoft in the late 90s. That was another allegedly impermeable uh, monopoly, except for that it, for it was unaware of the power of the internet, is the un unaware of the power of search, is the unaware of the power of, of the smartphone, is unaware of the power, a list goes on and on. So implicit here is that the Chinese, once again, have a sense of what the future is. They don't. And so if they are trying to control industry, they will, by definition, limit industry's growth and they will not become the economic power you think unless they have a superpower gene that the world has never seen before. But I, I didn't say that. I didn't say they know what's going to succeed. But Im they, Im you implied that they can control the businesses and they will limit them in certain ways so as a way to limit their, their, their ability to grow in such a way that would threaten the Communist Party's right. existence. Yes. So, they, so, they, so they, based on that, in the U.S., what the federal government would have done is come after Microsoft, once again, would have come after Blockbuster, because you know it was so powerful, would have come after, uh, come after Time Warner and AOL. Government is always looking in the past. And so every time, if that's what the Chinese government's doing, once again, I've got, you've got nothing to worry about, because the businesses that are going to be dominant in China in the future are not the ones today. And that's the same thing here. If you have me back in five years or 10 years, how much do you want to bet that Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook aren't the five most valuable companies in the world? I'll put any amount of money on that. Perhaps. And I will win. But how do you explain then the fact that already we are seeing American industrialists support Chinese communism over American constitutional liberalism or, or classical liberalism? Not liberal in the political sense. Well, for one, I think, once again, for the typical Chinese, they don't experience government authoritarianism. 
on a daily basis. This is not to defend, but let, can we at least to some degree admit that when we talk about the, uh, the dissidents in China and, and we defend them and, and we get behind them, it's kind of a rich man's concept. It's a Paris, Los Angeles, New York concept. You think the typical Chinese knows about these dissidents? They don't. Right, so the, the great firewall and the suppression no, no, of no, free but speech it, it, it's not a keeps people su- ignorant and unable to fight back. I don't think so. I think you'd find the same thing here. G- go to Aliquippa, PA, and see how many people could have this conversation with you. I don't think it's as much suppression because anyone who's at all good with computers in China can get beyond the firewall. It's so easy. Every time I've been to China, you get a VPN, you can, be on, you can get any information you want. Do they suppress Tiananmen Square? You better believe it. But if you, if you have passable knowledge of computers in China, you can get all the information you want about it. And so it's the same thing there. The typical Chinese is just too busy trying to make a living to worry about it. This isn't me defending it. But I think this notion that they're all repressed people is belied by what exists over there. This, if it were that repressive, it couldn't be that gleaming of a, of a country in many ways with buildings going up and all sorts of economic opportunity. Why do U.S. businesses kowtow? Look, it's a huge market. And why is it a huge market? It is because the people there are increasingly free to produce in very entrepreneurial ways. So long as it doesn't challenge the authority of the Chinese Communist Party and their goals. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to timcast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.